Richard Voltaire. My name is Hudson Charles. And this, this is, is Real, Real Talk, Talk with H&R. H&R. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's H&R. been, uh, how long has it been? It's been a year. It's been a, a year, 365 days. There has been a, such a high demand for the H&R show, well, from individuals that's watched the show. I'm not going to make it seem like we're like worldwide or something. <laughs> But <laughs> there's been a high demand for people to, um, the people have been wanting us to come back and bring this sure, back. So sure. uh, I just want to thank, as soon as we start our, off the bat, for those who have given a high demand, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate all the love that we've gotten. I don't think we realize how much of an impact this um, podcast actually has done until we actually stop filming. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. And to me, I feel like once we stop filming, that's when people... We're like, well, well, when are you guys coming back? And when are you guys going to come up, come back with the podcast? It was really good. And I feel like you guys are two young men of God and doing good stuff. So I just want to thank um, Brother Harold and um, Sister Skyena for allowing us to use their studio. Because, man, that, that is such a blessing. So Hudson and I were trying to, you know, our schedules were very conflicting. We got very busy. So um, we had to put the podcast on hold. But ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And we are coming back with great content. We're back to have a good time. We're, we're, we're ready to go. We got a lot we're going to be talking about. We got a lot. And, you know, it's been a year. Time just goes so fast. You know, we remember we were just in the car recording. And to me, I didn't know how much the show has impacted the community, especially amongst the young people. You know, they, they, I see people that say, hey, what happened to the podcast? Even my mom was like, you guys done? <laughs> you know, because you guys were doing such a good job, you know. And I was like, well, we don't have the time, but thank God, you know, um, you know, SG ministry, you know, I tell, I was able to talk to Harold and he's like, Hudson, what happened to your podcast? You don't, you don't do that no more. So he said, I have an, I have a studio and I'm like, really? So I came over, he let me check it out and the rest is history. And today, as you say, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. H and R is back, and we we're gonna have fun with this. And guys, please excuse Hudson with with his layers upon layers. He's wearing three sweatshirts and twenty five jackets because apparently it's cold for him. You know, Hudson's cold. I'm bald, guys. I'm not cold, but he is cold. Okay, so you know, I don't know. You I'm just don't saying. Have to put me on the I'm just gonna put him a spot a little bit. He trying to say he cold. I don't think it's that bad, but you know, I'm not trying know, to call for some brother reason, out. I feel cold today, and the jacket is keeping me warm. Yeah. The hat. You know, I do have hair. Thank you very much. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. You know, sometimes we're here mm-hmm. to have fun and we're glad to be able to to sit here together. Because yeah. I know my brother, you you don't really have time. You have a lot going on for yourself. You know, you've been busy and I've been busy too. And we don't live as close as we used to. You know, it was easier last year. Hudson moved behind Jesus, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we've been you know, it was like five minutes to say, Hudson, let's do this. Now I'm so far away. I'm all the way, you know, Lawrence, Mass. That's that's far, you know. But we're going to make it happen because we realize this show is important, especially the youth, you know, the, 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 the youth community, the, the, the young people. They need to have a voice of young men like you, like me, uh, that trying to make a, dif- a difference, you know, especially as Christian, you know, because you have so many people, so many influential uh, young people out there right now, some are not Christian, but they still doing do good stuff. But for us as young men that are trying to make a difference for God and for our family and the community, I thought I thought we it, we should be able to bring some discussions. You know, some things that you know lately there's been a lot going on. So yeah. we're gonna get into the bottom of this and talk about these things. I know some people are gonna be mad, but listen, at the end of the day, the truth must be told listen this is called real talk okay we are men of god and we're always going to talk about you know things of the word of god but we're gonna keep it real you know because that's what we do that's all we know we try to keep this podcast as as if hudson and i are sitting down on a couch making conversation that's how we're trying to do it and that's where we're going to go with it so our topic for today is going to be civil war amongst believers fight that's going on and that's a secret war I, could, I should call it and this is Hudson's idea you know Hudson we we're trying, trying to think about topics and things we're going to talk about and Hudson was like man this is a civil war going on amongst our people so what's going on here like we need to discuss it and the one thing that really came up was the Grammys the thing about the Grammys is 
I didn't watch the Grammys. I just saw, obviously, when you're on Instagram and you're on Facebook, I don't really have my Twitter out. But if you're on those social media outlets, you can see that individuals are talking about the Grammys and how demonic it was. I heard people say, oh, my God, it was so great. And it was so perfect. And, oh, man, everything was so nice. And so I'm like, okay, let me check out the Grammys for myself. What are we watching? <laughs> I was, listen. Two minutes into it, like I was just watching like footage of it, like certain performances. There are certain things that the enemy tries to hide, you know, to try to mask things that he's doing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have eyes and you have ears, you can see that the Grammys was blatantly demonic. And I'm just going to keep it real. If you are somebody that is saved with the Holy Ghost and somebody who says that they are in Christ and you couldn't see that the Grammys was demonic, I'm going to question. I'm sorry, I'm not Christ, but I'm going to question your, your discernment. I'm going to question whether or not you are on Team Christ. They were blatantly demonic, especially Jay Z when he was literally mocking the Last Supper on a black table with potions all over the table. I'm like, this is a form of witchcraft. I was like, oh, you can't judge him. You can't sit there and judge him. Don't judge him. I'm like, it's not about judging people. It's about stating the facts. Like, what like what mixture can light have with darkness? Like, we are, you know what's crazy? Christian people are so hell-bent to look like, act like, and be a reflection of the world. You should have seen, what's it called? Maverick City. I don't know what it was. I never said I'm perfect, but every time like a Maverick City concert came up or there was an opportunity to go to a Maverick City concert, Hudson, I yo, do we ever like, oh yo, Maverick City's and you know, going yeah. to TD Bank. Let's go. No, we ne we were never like, oh, I don't know what it was. And I'm not I'm not better than anybody else. I I have problems just like everybody else. But my I don't know if it was the sermon, whatever you whatever you want to call it. I never, and mind you, I love Chandler Moore. I think Chandler Moore is a, a beast of an artist, a uh, man of God. I, I know the Lord's using him. But this whole, like, obsession to mix with the profane, to mix with unbelievers, it doesn't, I don't get it. Like, they're like oh, you, they didn't even say Jesus, except for one one member said Jesus. The rest of them like, oh, we just want to, you know, I want to thank the Grammys, man. And I just want to thank the, really? So you want to thank the Grammys for elevating Satan? It's, it's when they say, I want to thank God. You know, just because they say God does not mean it's the God that we know. We just had sex on stage, I want to thank Anything God. Anything can be your God. But it, this is not, this is where I started to think myself. It's more like, okay, whatever you take pleasure in, that's what you feed in your heart. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not, I understand from a you know performance standpoint. I understand that some people, they need to be creative. But when I'm looking at the Grammys, I don't see creativity anymore. I, I see a worship. And I see it blatantly. It's not about, you know, entertainment anymore. It's pretty much we have, we're just doing a sacrifice, a worship to Satan. You know, now the world's going to do what the world's going to do. But us as Christians, we need to see, okay, which things do I need to take part of, you know, because I need to be able to separate what's feeding me that that's bringing God's positivity, God's light in me and what's coming to, you know, break the relationship I have with God. Because the more you get yourself involved in things in this world, the less you are like the, 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 the far, the farthest you, you go from God, because what happened, you're feeding your soul, you're feeding your heart. I see Christians ready to fight people over the Grammys. I see people trying to fight other Christians and say, hey, why are you so afraid? God already uh, set you free. I know I have the freedom in Christ. Yes. But that doesn't mean I should take part on every little thing. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean I'm, okay, well, the one thing that we know, the Beyonce of the world, you know how how big Beyonce is, you know, especially amongst the youth, the church youth in our community. You can't say a bad thing about Beyonce. They're going to fight you. Now, again, what are you learning? What are you getting from Beyonce's performance? Listen to the lyrics. 
listens to the performance, listens to what she says that take over her body sometimes. And there was a Sasha, now there's another, there's another one called Oshun. That's another spirit that she tapped into. So the thing is, I don't oh, hit. And then, I'm sorry, and, yeah. then, and then I have those, those, those crazy people like, you know, say, well, Oshun is from the ancestry of the black consciousness and Oshun means, means goddess of power of night. Listen, like I said, the love that Christ crazy. put in us is to love everybody. I can still love you, but I disagree with the lifestyle, what you choose to do. And I can also say I don't like to listen to the lyrics to those songs because they're not feeding my soul. They're not feeding my 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 heart. And whatever's going on, I'm like, I'm, un I'm wondering, why are you fighting? Why are you putting all this energy to defend something that has nothing to do with Christ that you believe in? I don't see no energy in the youth. They try to defend God no more. Especially nowadays. I don't see nobody put the energy to fight, to say, hey, Jesus, it's all about Jesus. I want to talk about Jesus. But when Beyonce comes in, when Jay-Z come up, they're like, oh, I'm going to be all up in that. And also buying the tickets to go to those shows. You taking part of stuff. Now, listen, you're like, well, I'm okay. It's just a performance. I want to be there just to listen, just to be a to have fun, I understand what, but what are you feeding your soul? And what the person is bringing? I can listen to some, you know, brothers and sisters that are performing. If I went to Berkeley not too long ago, I see people perform. It's all, you can tell it's all about the music. It's all about the, you know, the performance. But at times when you're watching the, the celebrities of t today, you can tell there's an agenda going on. Yes. And they're trying to shut every christian to not talk about you know what's going on so you gotta operate in a smarter way because god opened our eyes to see when the devil's trying when the enemy's trying to blind us and if you see a brother and a sister talking about this this is not the time for you to actually say oh no this is not about that not everything is demonic I can't stand when people say that. <laughs> that junk is so annoying, man. Not everything is demonic. Yes, it may not be straight up. Yeah, demonic, that's true. But still under the influence of what? Of the uh, of of evil spirit. Yo, my whole thing is like, does something have to be like blatantly demonic for you to be like, oh, like they're blatantly demonic now. They're not yeah. even hiding it. They look, yo, there was a music. So I was, um, I don't watch, um, I don't listen to music videos. I don't listen to worldly music anymore because it's straight trash. You can't understand where it's saying, oh, you hear debit, debit. Like, you know, when you used to go, you know, like back in the day when they had like those parties, right? And somebody would hit like, um, the DJ table and the music would kind of mess up. That's how the music, sound, that's how sucking music sounds nowadays. Debit, like the music's messing up because you can't hear a daggone, you don't understand a daggone thing that they're saying. And the thing about it is like now, Christian, not and people of the world are going to discuss things. They're in the world, you know. They gave their life to Satan. That's their business, and I pray that the Lord delivers them. But it's one of the people of God, the people of you know who are in the church, Christians. You know, we're supposed to be together on certain things. People are sitting here. It's all about likes. People are like, oh well, I don't mm -hmm. understand why the Beyonce tickets are so much money right now. The topic, the top topic of debate mm -hmm. right now is Beyonce tickets. Right now, like, has anybody ever heard that song? Um, what's it called? Church Girl that, that Beyonce did? Listen, I heard about it, so I just looked up the lyrics because I don't listen to Beyonce. She's demonic. She's blatantly demonic. So what I did was, like, I was like, I looked at the, the lyrics. Drop it like a thotty. Drop, drop it like a thotty. Drop it like a thotty. Drop, drop it like a thotty. Does anybody know what a thotty means? Does anybody know what a thotty means? Drop it like a thotty? Really? Oh, and then, and, I'm not, and I kid you not, I'm not even joking with this. I have spoken to some, um, you know, pe people of God to ask them their opinion about how they feel about, you know, Beyonce's um, new song, you know, um, Church Girl. I'm like, I could just feel like the anointing coming off Beyonce. Like, I could, like, I could feel it. And, and I, I... This is not a place of judgment, okay? This is simp just we simply observing. And this, it's okay for us to observe what's going on. The word says we need to be aware of where we are. And where we are right now, this world right here. Yes, God created the world, okay? 
But right now, the devil is working. The enemy is working. And the proof is so great that you see what society is doing right now. What used to be wrong 10, 20 years ago, they're right now. The morality is pretty much gone. You still have some people that are fight, fighting for good. But most people now, it's all about what I feel. It's no longer about the truth. So all I'm saying is that I'm not in place to judge you. I'm not in place to tell you what to do. But I can tell you what you're doing, the people that you're following, where is Jesus? I want I, we I supposed to project the light of God, Jesus. I want we supposed to talk about Jesus. You got young people today, they so into the ent entertainment world where Jesus take the back seat. And they don't even talk about Jesus no more. So when I'm looking at all the performance and I see how people are defending the, the Grammys and defending certain a group that are singing, it's all about the music. I know music plays a big role in our lives. I'm not going to lie. I used to be a lot younger. I used to love some songs. I used to love some hip-hop song. I got to tell it like it is. I was, Tupac. I was team Tupac. I ain't going to lie. Tupac however, said all that. However... The Bible says, when I was young, I reasoned like a kid. But when you grew, you get older, yeah. I start, you know, thinking like a man. So it, I'm not going to say it was always okay to listen to those songs. I remember I was talking to a, uh, to a believer. He says, there's no such thing as secular music. Oh, Lord. There's only secular lyrics. <sighs> Spirit dumb. Spirit so, dumb. So... Yes, secular lyrics. Spirit of dumb. But does that glorify God? Spirit of dumb. I understand that some people, as young men, young women, we would love to hear some love songs. I understand. But do this. Try to experience this. If you're someone you don't have a boyfriend and girlfriend, what pushes you to keep listening to a love song? Mm. It's starting to put you on the trend. You're starting to think about like, man, I could use somebody right yeah exactly i wish i had a boyfriend right you're now. set when you do that like listening to like certain love songs or whatever whether it's drew hill boys to man whoever you listen whatever yeah. r&b group yeah. you're setting like you're putting yourself in a place where it's like you're setting a tone and you'll end up hitting up that old boyfriend or that old girlfriend because i'm not saying there's a spirit attached to it because a lot of times there are spirits attached to this right, stuff right. but you're setting the atmosphere of sin to occur so, what do you think happens when you listen to gospel music, or well, real gospel music? I'm not talking about that stuff they put out there. You get closer to God. You feel so, what happens when you listen to secular music or mu music that's glorifying sex? It does the opposite. So, now you're thinking about sex. That's it. So, th that's the issue. Yeah. And the Bible says when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. All the old has to go and the new has to come. So, when does that new have to come? You know, when are we going to start... You know, um, creating an atmosphere of worship. When are we going to start coming together? Right. There should not be a civil war between be a uh, amongst believers. Yeah. You know, we're all supposed to be in one family. Yeah. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me why there's this huge civil war amongst believers. Like when I okay, so I you know, um, you came kind of late, but I was a part of Chicago Youth Ministry. So you came like we were on like you know, yeah, the later stages of the ministry. Our contentment was serving the Lord. It wasn't about pleasing the world. It wasn't like, I don't understand why believers, youth group leaders, um, youth pastors are so content with being like the world. Well, if we're going to reach the youth, we got to we gotta do hip hop and we got to do the latest song or do the latest dance. And that's the only way. I'm sorry. Christ said, I like sing on to me a new song. Mm -hmm. Sing on to the Lord a new song. Right. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord a new song. We are supposed to be a reflection, a light. The Bible says, it was a lamp unto my feet. We are supposed to be a lamp, a light, you know, a light, a beaming light that is shining through the darkness. Because we are supposed to be a reflection of the Holy Spirit. And it's hard to do that when you are constantly trying to be like the world. Let me ask people a question. Why is it that? Hudson, I'm going to ask you this question, my brother. Why is it that the church is always trying to accommodate and try to be like the world, but the world is not doing the same when it comes to the church? Mm. You want to know why? Because I'll answer that question. It's because they don't see a difference. There's no difference. Because 
here's my issue. And I had a problem with Tyler Perry, and I just it was my discernment, and I was obviously proven right because he was cross dressing, and obviously I don't agree with that. You know, that's in the Bible. And my whole thing was I could tell this dude was in it for the money. Because Janet Jackson and um Gabrielle Union, who's for all the everything demonic, like literally this man was literally putting a whole bunch of secular actors to the forefront. He was putting them to the forefront, right? That's what he was doing. How many of them got saved? None. Doing his Christian movies. That was my issue with it. Now, granted, I'm not saying that doing his movies, that was his, like, that's his responsibility. But how many of them felt different and felt convicted by the Holy Spirit doing his films? My problem is there was no change. They went right back into the world doing their secular stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then when once he started to become more secular, I was like, "Oh my God, I thought Tyler Perry was about Jesus." I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Like I knew that was the goal to make that transition. I was watching a documentary the other day. It was um, Lifetime. It was on Lifetime. It was about Janet Jackson. So Tyler Perry was on there, you know, and because Janet Jackson is his friend. And he was talking about, I don't understand why everybody was making a big deal about the Super Bowl incident. He said, everybody's just a blinking tit. <laughs> I'm not, guys, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not perfect. But all I'm saying is we need to open up our eyes and be on the same page here. Yeah. The reason why people are scared to put stuff out on social media on Facebook is because they know they're not going to get likes or they know they're going to get blasted. I can't put anything negative about Rihanna. I'm going to get blasted. I can't put anything negative about Beyonce. I'm going to get blasted. I can't put anything negative about Jay-Z. I'm going to get blasted. I can't put nothing about negative about Kanye West. I'm going to get blasted. And the thing that really hurts is... If you get blessed from the world, that's okay because they're in the world. They don't know any better. When people of the church start blasting you about these secular demonic artists, mm. that is the problem. We're supposed to have each other's backs now. Right. The devil is here. John 10 verse 10. The devil is here to kill, steal, and destroy. If we are aware of that fact, when are we going to come together and start putting on the full armor of God that it talks about in Ephesians chapter 6? When are we going to start to come together and realize that we need to be light bearers? Because we are sitting here fighting... A war that we can't win without Christ. We need the enemy wants friction amongst believers. He wants that. He embraces that. That's why he brings the spirit of confusion. That's why he wants you to emerge into his music. I'm gonna tell you right now, guys. Yes, news flash. Secular music is Satan's music. Why? Because when was his ability taken away in heaven? Lucifer's job was to usher in the presence of God by playing in music. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that the his the, his belly um, reflected the light and the jewels of the Holy Spirit. Right, right. So he ushered in the. He was so powerful that he took his music took two thirds, two thirds of the angels in heaven. So if his music was that powerful on high, you don't think he has any power down low? On the low, <laughs> he has no power down here. He had power up there yeah. to take two thirds of the angels that got created. But the thing, the thing you, you always hear is that the, ve the devil's already been defeated. So if de if he's defeated, I have nothing to fear. The, f the problem is it's not it's not just about knowing he's defeated because the only defeated because the presence of God is here. Mm. It's because Christ is in your life. Step away from Christ right now. See what happens. Mm. Step away from uh, praising God. Step away for a second. I have family members that used to be going hard, but what that person was feeding her soul, her her heart, she tells her, I'm still a Christian, I'm still a believer, but I can't take part of anything because I'm free. But the freedom, you take it for granted. You know what I'm saying? God will let you decide to do whatever you want to do. Yeah, It's up to you to stand for Christ or stand for the, for, for the world. At the end of the day, you know the world doesn't like doesn't love Christ. Why are you so eager to defend the world so much? Your job is to preach the world. Your job is to show God, show the world God's light. Show show them there's a better way. But if us as Christians, we just link, we just equally yoked with mm. the world, 
you can't preach the world no more. Nah, man. You're just going to follow along That's what it. they do. That's it. And then you're going to be like, okay, I'm still living my life. I'm still good with Christ. But you already lost the fight. Come on, and now. you will never see the devil coming after you no more because Come on, hey, you're part of him, you're part of his crew. You know what I'm saying? Only those who do, who does the or, or the, the ones who who does the opposite of what the world you know is doing right now. That's the only time you will see that life is gonna be a little challenging for them. That's the actually re- for that's them. actually really good what you said. But if you want to like, I don't even believe in the devil. Yeah, but you still work for him. Because you are a reflection of what he wants. So, and here's the thing people understand, right? God gives you two choices. There's no great areas with Christ. Well, you know, I can go to church tomorrow morning and I can go to the club tomorrow night. There is no in between with Christ. So God goes, it's either you're on the side of the light or side dark. So he's telling you, you have a choice. He goes, listen, I'm not going to force you to do anything. You have a choice. Either you are on my side or you on the devil's side. You know, and people understand when the Bible says whenever two or three are gathered in his name, he's there. We're supposed to be together. Can we cut it out with the civil war nonsense? And let's just come together and let's not have these open conversations on Facebook or Instagram, Snapchat or Twitter when they're looking at us like, oh, see, they're not even together. That's why I don't want to go to church. You don't understand. You are causing division, not just amongst believers, but among people who are. Those who are even contemplating coming to church don't even want to come anymore exactly. because they're watching us fight and they say, exactly. I don't, why should I go to church? They're not even together. They're, like, they're not even together. We have a tool today to use. Because, you know, evangelizing was always go to door to doors back in the day. We have a tool today that we use. Social media is a, is a place where you can use it for good and you can use it for bad. Yeah, We have a tool, our generation right now, we have a powerful tool to reach our hearts. But if we can't come together, if we say we're truly living for Christ, and yet we're fighting each other over ideologies, mm. over perspectives, because at the end of the day, there's no new perspective. The truth stay the truth. It there's no the new truth, anointings. And it will always be the truth. It doesn't change. Time changes. Okay? People must change for, for Christ. Mm. But at the end of the day, the truth of God stays the same. Mm. It doesn't change. There's no new perspective. So as Christian, you're listening to this and you're watching us right now. We're not doing this because we're better. But we're just observing and bring this to light and so we can talk about it. Now, if you're someone that's been going in for Jay-Z, been going in for Beyonce, been going in for Rihanna, I understand you love performance, you love music. But you also got to know what you're doing. You mm. also got to know what you're listening. You also got to know what you're bringing to your house, to your kids, what you're exposing your family to. Because the lyrics sometimes, you don't, you're like, did she just say that? Did he just say that? Like you heard murder, murder, Jesus. Did you just say that? And there's a, in the lyric of one, one thing that Beyonce said, it's so dark, so, so wrong. She was talking about a menstrual, and she said she will use the Holy Bible. Yeah, that. You know, you don't. But think no, about nobody, that? nobody caught that part. Oh, you know, she. But you don't understand the word menstrual in the Greek means. Like they, they gotta always try to find some loophole because they worship Beyonce. You don't understand? Beyonce is your god. So. At the end of the day, they'll make any excuse to sit there and be like, well, the menstrual cycle, you understand? The menstrual in the Greek means extra, which means extra. Tr- it's, it's always not, something, bro. It's not, that, it's not that serious, but understand, as Christians, we understand we need to be careful. Be careful with our heart mm. because our heart needs to always practice in the word of God and praising God. And it doesn't matter what time, what place, we always have to be the difference maker, just like Jesus was. And that's what he, want us to, he wants us to do. And as young people, it pains me when I'm seeing all those divisions. I don't see that in the older generation because they're not even on Facebook like that. You know what I'm saying? If they have all the problems, it's probably amongst them. But for us, we're exposing a fake Christ to me, a watered-down Christ, because you make it seem like it's okay to do whatever you want as long as your heart is in the right place with Christ. It's okay to be anywhere. It doesn't work like that. It's either or. It's either you're with Christ or you're against Christ. It's either you're for the devil or you're against the devil. Two paths. You choose. At the same time, it's in our show. Me and my brother here, we're talking about 
the greater good and we're trying to make a difference in the society that's it, that that's we it, in. and we're trying to bring those issues to light so like other Christians to be like you know what they're right I don't I don't I, I know what's going on but I'm so strong in Christ I know I'm good but the young brother the young sister that just learned about Christ who's gonna be the the, the, the example for them exactly it's probably you it's exactly. probably me exactly but if she's watching, it's like, wait, wasn't supposed to be a difference? If I'm a Christian, or, am I not supposed to look for the things of God? Instead, he sees you, okay, you're just shaking it over there. You just want to go to that party. Just shake it over there. There's no difference. Shake it to them. You know, hey, you know how to dance. You're going to dance. Okay, dance your night away. But at the end of the day, the next day, she sees you or he sees you in the pulpit. You're praising God. You'll be like, where, where, wh wh what's the difference? Then I don't need to, to put an effort anymore. No. I don't need to persevere anymore. It's no difference. I don't need to make effort because it's no difference. This is how it is. It's no difference. You know what I'm saying? So all we are saying, all we are doing right now is to say, hey, Christians, this is not okay for us to keep fighting each other. It should have been like, we can, re we can also, we can observe and help each other. To get into the right way, to live our lives for Christ the way we need to, to be an, a difference maker, to be a, a a true leader for younger generations, we need to be an example, like Joseph. You know what I'm saying? Like the young Elijah. You know, to be a somebody like I'm not gonna let God down right here. This is tempting. I know it's good. Certain career that will, you go after is gonna compromise you. You should not compromise your faith yeah. just because there's benefits in it. Just because that's the only way. Just because you can't compromise your faith with, with Christ, you have to stay the course. And at the end of the day, Christ is gonna take care of you because we know that the world never loved Christ. It never will. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, and that was very profound, my brother. There is no H and R show without Hudson. Because I can't do this by myself. I need my brother. I need my brother in order for this podcast to, you know, to progress and to be anything. You know, there are people who do stuff by themselves and stuff like that. But no, like, I feel like two voices are better than one. That's biblical. Christ could have came, you know, um, to the world and did all the miracles and everything he was supposed to do by himself. But no, he took 12 because he knows that there's strength in numbers. We need to understand that there's strength in numbers. We need to overpower the forces of darkness. And the only way we can do that is if we rebuke lies and embrace God's truth. We should not be celebrating sin. Sin is something that's happening. It is inevitable. It occurs. Yeah. We are not supposed to be embracing sin, embracing these secular demonic artists. The Grammys was really demonic. Like, it was so bad that I was like, the, the clips I was watching, I had to shut it off because my spirit couldn't take any more of it. Yeah. It was it was that bad. I didn't watch it, but like, I was watching clips. I was like, wow. Like, am I the only one seeing this? But people are so obsessed with loving these new artists. You know, you know the woke nation is something we got to talk. Uh -oh. Listen, we got to do, we can do a whole podcast uh -oh. about that. Uh -oh. The woke, the woke nation. That probably should be our next podcast. Because you're not woke. By the way, woke nation, you're still sleeping. Because without Jesus Christ, there is, you're not awake. You are mm. sleeping, okay? You're not, you don't have some level of like uh, intellect that is more powerful than your creator, okay? Yes. You want to know where woke came from? It came from Genesis, okay? When when the serpent came to um, Eve mm -hmm. and uh, persuaded her to eat from the tree of knowledge, he told her that she would be awakened, that she would be all seeing and all knowing. That's where woke came from. That came through sin. So next time you want to use the word woke, why don't you look at the origin of where that came from before you say that? Thank you so much for woke nation. Shut down because you're still sleeping. I agree to that. Thank you so much, that's, woke nation. That's that's it. Hey, all we're gonna say today is more like we need to stop fighting each other because only we can only be stronger together. Mm. We can only come together, forgive each other, forget about, because even, even right now, we still have ways to get back to where we need to be. Mm. Because Christ sacrificed for that and he gives us grace. He gives us 
our way to redeem, to, to be redeemed from sin, to be to step away from all the, the wrong things. We're not trying to use God's grace in vain. Mm-hmm. We want to take advantage of that. Yes. You know? And for us today to be standing here, to be sitting here while you're watching, and we're talking about Christ, with humility, like I said, I, we're not coming to condemn or judge. No. But we're just telling you like it is. Because we need to start finding brothers and sisters that truly stand for Christ and defend the, 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 the work of Christ. When you're looking at other people, the world, they're not afraid to show us who they serve. No. In their performance, the Grammys, you see it. You see what's going on. The blasphemy and everything. They don't have no respect for, for Christ. No. But us as believers that's following Christ, why can't we show them the same energy mm. and say, hey, I'm standing for Christ. I have the utmost respect for my creator. And I don't settle to serve a creation. I don't, I, I'm not into your universe thing. It's a creation. The universe thing. I gotta go for the creator, the one that's behind everything. That's God, the true God. Jesus is God. I want to let you know that right now. So wherever you are in the world, wherever you are listening to this, you need to understand that if you don't stand for God, guess what? God's going to deny you. Jesus is going to mm-hmm. deny you. you. I never knew. That's why the word says, not everyone that's calling on the Lord will make it to heaven. No. Will make it in his kingdom. When you get in for Jesus, start saying, Lord, Lord, I used to prophesy. I used to call on your name. He will say, I did not know you because you were compromised. We need to fight against that. We should not become compromised. If we say we stand for Christ, we have to stay for Christ 100%. I have a verse that I want to share with you real quick, which is this one. I always love it. It's Proverbs 3 verse 5. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We make that mistake every day. In all our ways, verse 6, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So we need to lean more on Christ more as young people. We need to make a difference. We need to continue to fight temptation whatever that, that's coming our ways to continue to push the gospel. The older generation, they're working on it. But we're going to face <laughs> crazier time. As, as we're going right now, whatever the older generation used to face, that's nothing. What we're about to face right hmm. now, we, we, we're going to have kids. What's coming in our way right now is going to be crazier. So if we somebody that's playing around with God, playing playing with the work of God, and we compromise, we're gonna lose the fight. But Jesus already have a plan. He will have soldiers that are gonna rise up. We got young men like Richard, myself, and plenty other more brothers and sisters that will stand and will say, you know what? We will stand for Christ. Yep. No matter the situation. And that's the word I wanted to share with you today. See, I'm laughing because I was going to use Proverbs. I'm not even lying. See, this is how you know me and my brother aligned. I was going to use Proverbs verse 3, which is hilarious. But that just shows that me and my brother were aligned. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a, a rhetorical question. Am I not my brother's keeper? Ladies, are you not your sister's keeper? Somebody needs to say something. When, when people are being blatantly demonic... We need to be blatantly honest, and that's when we shine God's light. Yes. Because if you're blatantly showing, okay, I'm all about Satan, I'm going to show that. Okay, okay, you know what? Let's shine God's light on this thing. Yeah. We can't continuously be open up to the enemy's schemes, allowing him to divide believers. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to come upon us and rebuke the civil war that is amongst believers. Because... It is deterring people from getting saved. It is deterring people from going to salvation. It is deterring people to want to go to church. And people are going to want nothing to do with Christ because they're looking at you saying, you know what? I don't want to get saved. Mm. Because if this is what being saved is all about, I'm straight. So, ladies and gentlemen, like my brother said, we're not here to condemn you. We're not here to judge you. We just know that this is what the enemy's plan is, to create this civil war amongst believers. It has to stop. We are serving one God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we need to serve him together. We got to do better. We We have got to do better. Be transformed. Because you have to be transformed in renewal of your mind. You have to. 
Like, what does it say? You know, Romans 12, verse 2. Do not, you, we hear this all the time, but nobody actually does it. No one, like, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. We have to be transformers, not performers, man. Yes, sir. We have to be transformers. That is the, and for us being transformers coming together, that is the only way the enemy will be rebuked and he will put all this civil war at rest realizing that it's not going to work if we come together if we come together as people of christ the enemy has no legs to stand on guys we want to thank you once again yep. we appreciate you guys it's been fun man it's fun it's good. coming yep. back man you know but god listen we in this together man we're gonna fight we gotta fight as one you know if there's guys outside waiting to to beat up hudson i'm like <laughs> brother you got that Nah, but together, me and him got that, you know, because this is my brother. There shouldn't be a civil war between us, all right? We serving the same God. We're going to fight together. I am my brother's keeper. Sisters, you are you are your sister's keeper. We have to be one in Christ and allow him to guide us, and we have to shed his light on the darkness like the Grammys. So, <laughs> so we are done, guys. We appreciate you guys. God oh, bless you. Yo. Thank you so much. It's, it's been great coming back, and uh, God bless all of you. See you on the next time. Next time.